you saying you have less fear now that you're older? Yes. Yes. As a young girl, beset I've always by associated fears. you as a playwright without fear because well, fearless, you, you I know. write these things. You it's go funny. after a subject. I, I mean, know. the thing I love about your writing is you go for it. Isn't that so funny? So you don't hang on. There's no sort of safety holds. You hang on and you go. And we'll go. Yeah. Oh my God! Here goes Judith at a subject. Yeah. But now you're saying and that you actually person, have less fear now. And then as a person, I was now. full of fear. So actually, I'm a little afraid as an artist that now that I'm fearless, <laughs> maybe something it'll affect my writing badly or something. But I don't think so. I don't think so. It happened because I had a, was having a difficult time in a rehearsal hall. Um, with a difficult individual, and uh, I said to someone I trusted there, you know, I'm, fri I'm f afraid to go into the, I actually feel fear, I don't feel safe. And, and he said, well, why don't you ask so-and-so, because, you know, she's fearless. And something just went boom inside me. And, I mean, yes, of course, I'd be fearless to defend my children or my principal. I know all that, right, but right. approaching everything with... You mean emotional fear? Yeah, f females are constructed that way. That's our script. I think for the moment we're born women. Yes. And even though some of us fight it and in every way, it's still there. A layer of fear. Yeah. To keep yeah. you in position, in control. Yeah, and even though we check, we fight it and you stand up to the bully, inside your heart's pounding. You know. So does okay, so two reporters are trying to get Rob Ford to answer the question that he's never answered. And one reporter is a, a young man and the other reporter is a young woman. You think the young woman then is probably has more fear as she's trying to push her. But it's hard to like say Ju with Judy journalists Rebic who are totally fearless. Yeah. I mean, fantastic. Angela and Merkel. I mean, fantastic. Uh, exactly. How can they do it? They're up there and all, they have all these haters. You know, I used to be just wounded almost unto death by one bad review. Now I think it's funny, and also the internet's so wonderful because they don't matter at all, uh, and it's always word of mouth. But but. How do they do it? You know, the arrows are constantly. So being when shot you were at them. wounded by reviews, as indeed Charlie Milo yeah. as an actor, I yeah. go, well, Robert, you just your skin is too thin. Yeah. Be like so and so. They don't seem to matter. Be yeah. like David Fox. Yeah. But I never associated you being vulnerable to other people's opinions about your work. I'm I'm glad that you haven't, but I was. I remember riding in the rain with my now husband when Crackwalker first stole. <laughs> we were the, the response had been so great that we were. Right, pouring rain, thinking, oh, the reviews are going to be great, because we'd just come from, you know, I'd just come from a small town, and the reviewer, and it went pouring rain, and it was just a laceration, just an <laughs> evisceration, and I was in a state of shock. And I guess it was like being called a name in the schoolyard, or graffiti, it's the public nature, you don't care about the one person, and I, now I really don't at all, because I measure the audience. I do care if they're not right. getting it, or receiving it, or, it's not about like, it's about receiving and penetrating that's how that's my measure of, of success and there's been a couple where I have not succeeded but uh, the ones I feel most strongly about it has and then if it goes around the world that's that's a great test yeah and so how do you how did you grow past um, the negative reaction of bad reviews the support of my community who I really respected the theater community first people who's, who knew what they were talking about um, and then the feeling of the audience and the responses and the letters and the emails and the, you know. So is your vulnerability to, was your vulnerability to those bad reviews out of the fear? I mean, in my case, it's out of I'm inadequate and I've been found out. I really don't know what I'm doing. If that fear, is that your fear? Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah, they're right. They, they must know kind they of thing. Know. But it also just what, it was a wound, like someone calling you a name. Don't you find even if a stranger spits at you or something, it, it stays with you? It's a stranger and they're probably crazy. It shouldn't, but it does. Yeah. Or if somebody snubs you at a party. or like, We're so sensitive to all those things. So to be in a public newspaper, you know everybody's reading it coast to coast. And especially people who are outside of the theater, your mother's friends, that kind of thing, they think that that's gospel. Right. You know, they, oh, I'm so sorry your play failed. Well, it didn't fail, but <laughs> he didn't like it. Yeah. I don't know. We're public creatures, I guess. And now it really doesn't matter to me. Why? Well, for instance, with the, the, the play I just did, Rare, which I consider a play, not a showcase, with nine performers with Down syndrome, their words, over six months, um, capturing the gold. They'd talk for hours, and I'd get two sentences. And, until, but it had to be their words. And it was so magnificent. They are such poets, such true actors, such authentic actors. I learned so much from a simple way 
Sarah would say at the end, love Sarah. She could not manufacture. Mm -hmm. Whereas we would always love Judith. We'd put on something, you know, we try not to, but I learned so much. The audience were rhapsodic. They went out of their minds for this play, for these characters. Not because, oh, isn't that wonderful for Down syndrome? Isn't that sweet? It wasn't that. It was raw. Um, it told very hard truths. They told very hard truths. It took me a long time to get to the place where I might say, you know, most people terminate when they find out their babies will have Down syndrome. What do you guys think? I had no agenda. I might have done the same. I don't know. Uh, just wanted to know. And then what they came out with, I, I had a transcriber. It's, that's it. That's the center of our play right there because that's where one became political. And he, because they, a lot of trying to please, right? Just said that's against our rights. That, that, that's discrimination. That's against our rights to be who we are. We're unique. We're rare. This was Nick, the sort of leader. I'm just like, oh my God, that's a monologue from it could be Ibsen, it could be, you know. It's just brilliant. And, and so I don't care what anybody says. I know there was one who was saying, well, we want to find out how they go grocery shopping. I'm like, what? <laughs> Do you want to know how I go grocery shopping or how had a gabbler? Go? Like, come on. So, but it doesn't even make me angry. I only get upset if they get upset and read it. But right. I felt the audience and, you know, 100% sold out. And What do they think about the reviews? What do uh, they think about being seen? What do they think about losing their privacy they loved in the it. public? You know what? And people, whenever I get social worker types in, they go, oh, you don't have a psychologist in? Because I've done three of these now, and I'm on a fourth right now. You don't have a psychologist in the room. You know you're going to trigger everybody. It's going to be very difficult. And they have all these catchphrases and everything. No, they trigger. You know, and the one I'm currently working on with quadriplegic, she, one woman had tried to commit suicide. And she, you know, we're going, okay, so when you jump and your father tries to grab you and your eights, okay, when you're on the ground, okay, you go like this and you, you guys in your wheelchairs move them over here. And it's absolutely, they love it. You're just turning into the machine, you know, to make the machine work. And the and one they like it because their story is being told. They like it that, because they're behind, for coming out from behind the veil. Yes, and they want to heal too. And in this particular case, she said this was a shy woman, and I said, you know, it it, it could be very healing for other people, but not trying to push in any way. If you want, then she really wants to tell the story, because she was suicidal. There was the medication wasn't working. She was an immigrant. Uh, she jumped eight stories. But once we're turning she it into... She jumped eight stories? Eight stories and is now in a wheelchair. She's actually only paraplegic. She's doing pretty well. And she's happier than she's ever been. Yeah. 